Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture 5 uh, with a thought process from get a, a great scientist Albert Einstein. I like him very much because he talks something which touches my heart. The concern for man and his destiny must always be the chief interest of all technical effort that we are not doing today. We are doing technology or the other thing for the market. Never forget it among your diagrams and equations. We do that. We use a lot of diagrams, equations, but what for those things? Those are for the human welfare. That is a very important point I must tell you to you people. So, let us recall that what we learnt and we learnt a lot from the Kotalya, the what you call, he is also known as Chanakya, the great person India has produced, a great teacher that Navena Anveng, so the head, that means we will have to do research and relook at it, the old stuff and use it modern time. And then we look at chronological order, whatever this little amount of scriptures we could manage to keep in spite of number of invasions, right, and thousand years of being subjugation by the powers which were there in this country and we find plethora of informations and knowledge our ancestors were having. But I will now just to complete that, uh, taking from what you call 900 to 1200 AD, if you look at this is a Ganita Sara Samagra of Mahavira and uh, Russia Hridaya of Govinda Bhatta, uh, Krishi Parasar of uh, and also the Briksha Ayurveda. If you look at these are the scriptures, uh, what we are having, these are the things whatever there, you know, like lot of things are not there. And this is the Rasha there and of Govinda Bhatta and the Krishi Parasha, it is about agriculture. This is Briksha Ayurveda about how to take care of plants and other things. And during this period, there is a, a lot of manuals people have done for agriculture like uh, and botany and of course, uh, like uh, use of mineral medicines and there is an encyclopedia work is there. And uh, there is a, a lot of things have come into pictures what we are getting like uh, summation of series and see the method of solving quadratic equation. I mean the quadratic equation we know the how to solve, we use it in schools and colleges, but there is a various ways given by Sridhar and we you might be aware iron pillar at dhar and a lot of alchemical ideas were being used at that time and we are having iron casting, paper making and several other things like uh, there is a book of uh, Mana Solasa Somadeva, right? This book, and in uh, from 1300 to 1500, this is uh, basically Sarangadhara Sanita. There is a one book which we are having, which talk about Materia Medica, and uh, also the urine and pulse examination of the body. They were doing. It is not that today we are only doing the examination. They do that earlier days, and new dimension to astronomical and mathematical work. There is a book, a lot of chemistry books have, uh, we, we got it, I mean like Rasa Ratnaka, Rasa Samuche, like these are the books what I am trying to tell. And there is a pyrotechnic, you know, like method of uh, doing that, it is came up and we are having evidence for. Beside this, we are having Kerala school of mathematics and as I told like uh, Kerala, from Kerala it went to the western countries, lot of mathematics to and they uh, started looking at seriously. And complex chemical processes as you are telling pyrotechnics and the other things were also came up at that time what historian admitted, you know, they are saying it. So, 16 and 1700, 
like of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, factories being established because if you look at there, uh, it is the Mughal and the Britishes, you know, period kind of things and the industry and other thing they are doing. It is basically, cottage industry was uh, in, you know, uh, what to call, were there earlier because we always have a cottage industries, if you look at our history. But these are the big industries, little medium level come up and then the our things also got this thing destroyed in the process. And uh, of course, the gun and gun powders came into pictures like we are having lot of uh, cannons and astronomical ideas of course, capped steel we are doing that thing like agriculture, perfumery, you know perfumes were being used by the Mughal or the Muslim rulers and we are having and perfumes were also earlier there. But they were using for that and therefore, lot of uh, you know this thing. 1800 uh, AD onwards, we are having also still this uh, you know knowledge generation was continuing in spite of invasion, it was going on. And uh, unfortunately, this 1800-2000 that several you know technologies we have taken from the outside country at the cost of indigenous technology. So, our own people are become jobless and even in spite of apathy for them, still you will go to the rural area, you go to even Kanpur city, you will find some you know uh, uh, Kumbhar jo kehte, potterers, you will be finding some uh, blacksmiths and then they are doing a wonderful work in spite of all these things. And according to me, India being a populous country, it should not go for the uh, what you call mass producing and also the machines so that you know our people jobless. We should go for the what you call the cottage industry so that more employment can be generated and uh, also the creativity can be developed. Let me tell you what I think. I think is that this is the patent Raj. Patent is killing the creativity and also the market forces are taking and then it should be people should have knowledge not the market forces. Earlier days our country were always believe people should have knowledge, scientific knowledge, technological knowledge, they can involve in creativity and enjoy the life. So, that we need to revive, I must urge all of you do not go after the job, create the job for others and develop a eco friendly technologies. So, that more people can be employed and more people can be creative and enjoy their life. So, therefore, we need to look at what we need and this ancient science and technology can give us way to do that. Let me now look at two little, this is about chronological, right. What I am now trying to tell you like little more details about that and we will go back to the Harappan civilizations and that uh, geographical setting if you look at, it is the north side the Himalayan regions right. If you look at like these are uh, which is not shown here, but these are the Himalayan region here it will be and uh, eastern basically possible low hip and this is basically in this region this is the Harappan culture we are having this is you call it Kabul and this is your Indus river and this is Jhelum river as and the Chenab, Ravi and Satlej all are joining to this and the uh, nearby this you know like earlier days the Saraswati river was there people are saying. And this is your Mahinjada which is the spot and uh, as I told you that Mehergar is the place here where which is the one of the Harappan sites and um, Kalibagan region also is one of the Harappan sites and Lothar let me look at it where it is. Uh, Lothar here. These also Harappan sites. These are if you look at whole regions are basically Harappan region, this region what you call you know. This is the region what people have accepted in our okay. And so, uh, one side is west side is your Arabian sea and this is your um, in the north west side, this side basically you will be having the passable Hindu Kush Parvat uh, you know like mountain will be there and Khyber Pass and 
Of course, north side is the plain of Indus, this is uh, Ganges rivers, if you look at this is your Yamuna and these are the Ganga river here okay. and these are the Gangetic plains regions. This region is the Gangetic plain regions and, uh, and this is of course, this, this region is the your Deccan region southern side and high plateau extremely dry this regions and the border on the east and west by mountains as I told you there will be eastern ghats here in this region, eastern ghats and this is western ghats separated from the north by river low mountains of course, we are having and if you look at that is very important because this sea is you know controls your monsoon wind and so also the Himalaya. These are the things what govern and we are destroying this uh, eastern ghat and western ghats and other mountains as well <laughs> right, we are spoiling it and we do not know what we are doing. So, how to overcome because uh, people want to have a, a what you call buildings of the rooms which is made out of concrete. Now, from where they will get stone from the mountains, if you look at 130 crore people, if everybody will having a house which is made of concrete, then where will be mountains and the life of a concrete house is 50 years. Then after that what will do, again where after the mountains you destroy then where will go. So, mountain has to be protected, how to go about it? Is there any technology we can have a good house, a pakka house right, not out of mud and also do that, how to do that? Can you get any technology from the ancient time? I will show you that later on that we can do that. So, of the what you call uh, October to April is the dry season generally, but nowadays it is changing it is. So, also the of the Indian Ocean may be in September the wet, wet, wet season right May to September there is a lot of rain kind of things and this is helps uh, I will tell you that we are we should take care of ecology and then that is the geographical kind of thing. So, if you look at as I told that this is the Khyber uh, or you call it Khyber Pass or this is the Hindukas you know mountain range and this is your Harappan side Indus uh, what you call river it goes and these are the sites I have told already right. So, um, this Indus valley regions were having a rich deposit, but uh, of course, it was uh, like Nil they always compare with the Nil river right in the and wheat and valley were cultivated in the Indus valley what uh, people are already found out and then cultivated cotton before 3000 BC right. And uh, if you look at this Harappan and Mahanjadara, like if you look at your Harappan is here in this city one and uh, Mahanjadara in this region right, that is the place. And uh, possibly they might have served as a twin capitals like the today we are having you know twin capitals. So, um, and each city, each city had a fortified citadel that means, where the administration administrative people will be there, it will be also protected and uh, a large granary that means, lot of food stuff they will be storing in that and those streets I will be showing something uh, later on I am just telling now the broad streets and market places, temples and public buildings were there like whatever we are having in modern time and that is something uh, 6000 BC according to the new data otherwise 3000 BC ok. So, uh, and they were having standardized weights, measures and arc kind of things which I would not be talking, but it is there and they were having very good act architecture they were using burnt bricks as well. So, uh, domestic trades like they were having like items like pottery, tools, metals like and also they are using a lot of other items like cottons and they were trading with Mesopotamia, Greek and other things from something 2300 to 1750 BC. If you look at these are the products what they are having like this is the thing what do you do base right. Even today also we are doing this flower base. And these are basically weight you can see this one right and uh, and these are of course, the dolls and then 
kind of things and various uh, motifs are being used like uh, so uh, of course there is a various phases people have divided they call it basically uh, ravi phase or ali harappan phase code dg phase code dg is a, is not shown in this diagram it will be somewhere in one place and harappan phase a harappa phase b harappa phase c depending upon this chronological you know years and harappa late harappan transitional and then late harappan is something 1800 bc to 1300 bc what of course these numbers also will be varying from different you know uh, group of people so if you look at let us look at indus valley civilizations and uh, as i told they were having a lot of you know engineering components and they were following the decimal divisions of measurements for all practical purpose that what we use and uh, including the measurement of mass they were also knowing how to measure the mass that like we use kg gram and other things and uh, if you look at uh, they were having the indus valley utensils you can see it is so nice looking and then they could have and so also the dancing girl of mahenjadaro if you look at this kind of uh, things are being used by the gujarati people even today these are bangles okay <laughs> these bangles are still today that means from that onwards we are having the tradition that means our culture is living so this is there is several signature you will get you will have to look at it you will look at it with that eye so this is also the what you call they are using lot of uh, ornaments for their to the you know these are the very fine minute ornaments how they are making what are the technology they were having today if i want to make i'll have to use sophisticated machine do they had sophisticated machines how they were making those things right they may be having we do not know but if you think of you know it is very difficult and this if i ask all of you engineering people like will ask how to make this thing very few people will tell me look you can make this way <laughs> okay so these are the thing we need to say how they are making what are the precision how they are doing like red pottery you know like if you have very good motif it is having design how they are doing and still existing after so many these are all evidence from that excavation it's not that some picture has been made later on so very interestingly uh, if you look at uh, a paper published in nature which is a very prestigious journal right oh, and the best or the most prestigious journal is nature they published in 2006 and uh, about the how people were doing this in vivo in a living person they were doing the drilling the human teeth today also we do if you are old or something your teeth has gone bad they were doing at that time and that has been proved and 11 drill molar crowns from the nine adults were discovered in the neolithic graveyard in mehergar i talked about mehergar where it is is a seat place that dates from some 3500 to 5000 years ago again they are saying this were dev dated of course iit kharagpur is saying 1000 years again more than this but according to other their discoveries point to the tradition of proto dentistry in the early farming culture of that region because our culture if you look at it is farming agriculture i remember when gani jal singh he was the president he told in foreign country what is your culture he told spontaneous agriculture i used to laugh at him but today i realize he was true <laughs> agriculture is the culture of our country the village is the soul of our country we should keep the village culture intact and so also the urban it's not that only village will be there we always live in urban and village kind of thing both are important so therefore we need to learn these things how they are manufacturing and i am sure that they were not using that machine of what we are using they were using the cottage industry by using the mind and you know uh, hand this is a balance between mind and hand so that we are having it is there in our blood we need to revive it so if you look at uh, there is a lot of uh, this thing which i have already talked i will not talk about that but i will tell you that one thing the harappan society was free from man made destructions today we do that if you look at newspaper lot of destruction we are doing we are not at peace the society is not at peace because of blatant misuse abuse of the technologies 
So, and no evidence of warfare invasions and of course, why it was collapse is a one question that might be arising in your mind. Maybe it is due to some kind of climatic change or maybe they had used the technology at that time blatantly and spoiled the world, therefore it got extinct. There are several questions looming around and you people may do research to find out why that civilization got extinct at that time till uh, you know and then again new phase started later on around 500 BC. Now, I will come to the Vedic era. So, you must be knowing that Veda, Veda is divided into four types, you know one is Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, Athar Veda. So, uh, it is texts are available today, it is very difficult to read, if you want to read, you will have to learn Ashtadhai, that grammar, I am afraid very few people are, are there in this country who can teach you, you know properly. And we need to revive that, otherwise you cannot understand the Vedas. And the basic text is four Vedas as I told and each Vedas uh, will be having Sahita, Brahmanas, Aranyaka and Upanishads. These are all various parts which need to be look at it. Of course, I do not know, uh, I, I could not understand, I was trying to read Vedas, but I will tell you I like the Upanishads which is very easier and simpler and very profound in that and one should study that. Of course, uh, with the help of somebody one can look at Vedas. And there are uh, supplemented texts, six Vedangas and complemented texts, four Upavedas, Upangas which are still existing, there might be several other things. Main ancient knowledge system is basically 14 disciplines. So, if you look at this is basically 6 and 4, 10 and then this 4 total is 14 as of now. So, supplementary text if you look at it will be Siksha, Siksha means education and also the phonetics, phonetics very plays important. Today we do not know phonetics, we do not know the science because ours is a phonetic based language, but we do not know. <laughs> how it is and that is being emphasized earlier days. And of course, education what was given, uh, I will not talk here, it will take at least 2, 3 hours to talk about that, what is the kind of education, I have understood little bit about it. And Bakarana is very profound, very great and people have accepted it, we do not read that way. And prosdi that is the Anchandas basically, how to do that, it is an art, it is also require a lot of mind, we do not do that today. Nirukta etymologies like how these words are formed, we do not know. If I ask somebody, so how this word has come, let us say Manav, Manav kisko kawage, man what do you call? Oh no, no, Manav is man, <laughs> not, you are having some definition, certain things, Pro properly it is being spelled out, science is there, it is a very beautiful, we do not do that. Jyotisha is being looked down upon today because of business, because of misuse of it and Kalpa rules of rituals, whatever the rituals there should be some rules and it is having certain reason, those are we do not know, it has to be looked at, research has to be done. So, if you look at uh, Upabedas, of course, they are divided into four parts, one is Ayurveda, most of you will be aware because it is coming up again and unfortunately Ayurveda is being practiced in, in the form of allopathy, people have not understood they should use through the tenets of that and then practice that way. I will not elaborate on that and I will just inform you that these are the things one can look at Dhanur Vedas, Gandhar Vedas and Artha Vedas that is about economy and all those things together if you look at Artha Vedas economy, you can think of Silpa Sanita, I have already talked about little bit, what do you mean by Silpa in the first lecture. So, <coughs> What I will do, basically you can say Silpa Sanita is basically engineering or technology treatise kind of things. It will be about Dhatu Khanda, about art science, about what are the things are there. Sadhana Khanda is basically about transportations like sea transportation and then uh, what you call uh, road transportation. Of course, people are claiming that there is a air transportation, but I do not know that, but at least sea and then you know sea and then other thing we can accept. Okay. Architecture, the Bastu Khanda, there is a we are having Bastu Sastra, it is a now a very big business, people are making lot of you know they are fooling the people also, one has to be careful. Uh, and then when you talk about this art science is basically agriculture, 
because agriculture was a very part and part of our civilization even today, till today although we lost the way to western people. Now again the agriculture is coming up with a new name of organic farming, but that is our way of doing it and we must uh, relearn it not from the western people from our scriptures and improvise it if it is required at this moment. Jalasastra, water is very important and mining the Khanisastra is also is one can look at it and uh, if you look at Krishi Sastra is basically Briksha Vidya like plantations, Pasu Vidya about animal science, Manishya Vidya like human resources you know like it is a part of Krishi you know <laughs> like it is a part of Krishi. So, how to make them this thing Jala Sastra will be about scriptures of water, uh, Sansechan Vidya they basically irrigation and Sangrana with that drainage of water like how to uh, transport and other things and Stambana with the storage of water because water storing is very important and it is a very natural way people have done. I will be talking about that when I will talk about water harvesting how natural it was to us. And uh, if you look at uh, the Khani Sastha is it Puthai current separation of metal that we do in modern time. And uh, Bhasmi Karan with the calcination, I will be talking about that uh, later on. And uh, Sankara with making of alloys, we are having, you might be knowing most of the temples we are having any metal, it will be Panchadhatu, Ashtadhatu, Navadhatu, you know, these are all nothing but alloys. And uh, Dhruti with the gemology, like you know, gems, like we are very good people are using lot of things earlier, they were knowing how to do that. And transportation, if you look at Noka Sastra, like uh, boats making Ratha Sastra, Hars riding, Agnaya Sastra people call it space travel. I do not know about that, but at least I can say that Noka Sastra we are having evidence, Ratha Sastra anyway we are there. So, these are thing has to be looked at it. But when I am saying I do not know that does not mean we will not look at it, we will look at with a pinch of salt with a you know mind to unravel prove that it is right, not go by emotion, go by the th something. So, Tari Vidya, raft makings, No Vidya, construction of boats, Noka Vidya, construction of ships, right, all were having and uh, Ratha Sastra of course. So, these are the Jukti Kalpataru, Artha Sastra, these are the scriptures available and uh, Ratha Lakhyanam, Sukra Niti, Artha Sastra, right, these are the things from where you will get some information about this. Ashwabhida, horse riding, Pathabhidya, road construction, Ganta, Pathabhidya, hill roads like roads will be hill side one, Setubhidya, breeze construction. Uh, so, if you look at Agni uh, Yana Sastra, what people are giving Yanta Sarvasya, Agastha Sanita, Samarangana Sutta, that these are the books whatever people have collected and Sakunta Vidya, Bard's training, they were doing earlier days to train the Bard to give the information, Biman Vidya Air and Spacecraft. So, uh, about the what you call architecture, they about building, fort making and town planning, I will be talking about town planning and also the about the rural areas, how you can make buildings kind of things, I will be talking about this. Of course, I will not be touching upon fort making because from these two we can learn a lot how we can do. And uh, I think this Brahma Sastra, if you look at how to uh, look at Baso Vidya, tents, people were making tents and huts, Kuti Vidya, Mandira Vidya, I will be talking about how to make the huts, where to people are using, Mandira Vidya, I may not, Prasada Vidya, like uh, palaces, and uh, Nagar Rachana Sastra, town planning, I will be talking about, Apana Vidya, market, Raja Guru Vidya. Sarvajana uh, Vasa Vidya, public places, Banopona Vidya, garden, how will do, and Devala Vidya, temples. So, I will be talking about in town planning only the buildings, I will not be touching upon temples, is a very uh, vast subject, you know. So, and uh, this fort making, I will not be talking about the Durga Vidya, forts, castle, like Kuta Vidya, Akar Vidya, like moats, you people might be knowing, is basically drench which will be having this thing, Yudha Vidya, warfare. So, uh, what I will be now, I will be stopping over here and then we have seen what is the plethora of knowledge our ancestors were having.
but we will be discussing some of them only. Okay. So, uh, you have seen the whole gamut like uh, of the things whatever the required for leading a very nice life and also a very productive and balanced life, some of the technology are required and we will be looking as you go along with that. And in the next lecture, I will be talking about how our people who are doing science, what are the basic principles they were following that we will be looking at in the next lecture. Thank you very much.